Before we begin with this video, I just want to say that I will be telling you everything about this game as it is. So if you were expecting me to be biased because of nostalgia or because of my current opinion of Ubisoft, then I just want to say that I'd like to take this chance to apologize. To absolutely nobody! First of all, this game still looks good. Whether it be during a sunny day or when wetness is dripping from above, I don't know why I said that like that, the game is just very pleasant to look at. The world is dense with vegetation and tall grass and the vibrant color tones have helped this game's graphics age extremely well. The character models of main characters also look good, though there's a black shadow effect at their edges for some apparent reason. The unimportant NPC character models though look okay at best, but this game has the most repeating character models I think I've ever seen in a game. So this guy right here who is the target demographic for companies to exploit during Pride Month has been cheating on his wife with a guy. But the problem here is the guy looks exactly like him. So I guess in a way you can say that he has himself. Now because this is a Ubisoft game and I played it on PC, there were some technical problems though they were nowhere near as bad as the current PC ports that Ubisoft puts out. First of all, there is no option to disable motion blur in settings, so I had to mess with the configuration file to fix that. There is some micro stuttering here, especially if you're on a Ryzen based machine, and there were only 4 game breaking bugs during my entire playthrough. But as I said, it's not that bad. But what is really bad here is having to use Uplay even if you bought the game on Steam. And no, changing the name to Ubisoft Connect does not change a f thing. But that was for PC. What's universally anal fisted here is the audio. Now most of the times the game sounds good, the sound effects from guns and interactions are nice, the music is good except for that one part where it's just incredible, but the moment an NPC that is not a part of the main story starts speaking, shit just goes down faster than your girl's panties after seeing me. He has the tattoo of Arakiat Warriors. He will help us. This is probably the worst voice quality I have ever experienced in a AAA game. Did they use like a $1 microphone from Wish to record this? Every time one of these types of NPCs tried to talk to me in the game, I was like, SHUT YOUR FUCKING MOUTH! Let's talk about the gameplay now, beginning with the gunplay. TRIPLE KILL! Oh my god, I think I just came in my pants. Now this is no surprise to anyone, but the gunplay here is good. There is some sway on your hands to make it feel realistic no matter what weapon you're using. The game rewards you depending on the method you use to kill an enemy. For example, headshots have more XP than body shot kills, so that makes them even more worth it. When you kill a running enemy, they have a cool movie-like animation when falling, which is satisfying. And the gunplay here is responsive, feels good to play, and I have no complaints with it. The other approach to action is stealth, and I absolutely adore the stealth takedowns here. And I really like the fact that you can even use them in the middle of a gunfight if you catch an enemy by surprise. It is so satisfying to rush towards an enemy and then end it. Plus there are many different types of takedowns in the game which are so damn cool and I'll mention them in a bit. Now the enemy AI during combat feels offensive, but during stealth, everyone is just partially blind. But because the actual killing is good, it is really fun to just bully the AI sometimes. Driving is also an important part of the game and it is good, for the most part. Because you are on an island, some chunks of the map are divided by water and it's really fun to act on the incentive to hop out of a car and onto a jet ski to get to another part of the map. I do have a problem with the driving though and you'll soon find out what that is. You need to climb towers to reveal areas on the map and this is where I have my biggest gripe with this game and that is how it handles verticality. On a positive note, there is hang gliding and a wingsuit in the game, but the wingsuit is very situational and the hang gliders are only available on certain spots on the map, which is alright in my opinion. Now, let's get into the meat here. No homo, by the way. First of all, the climbing here is absolutely f***ed, mate. I hate this type of climbing in open world games where the reach of your jump doesn't matter and you can only climb on a certain highlighted area. But in this game, I feel like that shit has been taken to the extreme. Never mind not being able to go through windows, it feels like you have to stand on the exact polygon, look exactly at a particular point for you to grab and actually climb up a ledge. This also isn't helped by the fact that these towers are really repetitive with barely any changes amongst them. This also also isn't helped by the fact that once you reveal the map, it just looks so cluttered and f***ing cum shots all over your face with so many icons. And I don't know why no one mentions how stupid it is that you can't climb on an inclined space, but you can however climb on the same or on an even more inclined space as long as there's even a single strand of grass on it. Now, we have talked about climbing on stuff just like me on your mother, but what about going down also like me on your mother? Well, descending down from these towers with zip lines is actually kind of satisfying, but real quick, let me give you an accurate representation of fall damage in Far Cry 3. This guy gets hurt from a fall that is like a foot above his jumping height. Hell, even the problem I had with the driving is related to this. What the hell, man? The car was in the air for like one second. Granted, there's an upgrade to reduce this a bit later on, but that isn't an excuse for how stupid this 
is. And now that I've mentioned upgrades, we can finally talk about something that I love about the game, and that is its upgrade and progression system. The sense of progression in this game is really strong, mainly because of the fact that you start out feeling underpowered. You can loot enemies in chests to find money and items you can sell for money, using which you can buy weapons at any safe house. Each weapon has certain attachment slots, using which you can upgrade your weapon. As you progress through the game, you unlock more weapons, and it's really satisfying to carry a decked out gun late game and overwhelming enemy types show up. But if you complete towers, you don't even have to buy weapons, they become free. This was the only reason I climbed every single tower in this game, just like your mom climbs on the top of my tower every single night. God, why do I keep bringing that up? I swear to God, if this was modern day Ubisoft, they would have definitely found a way to monetize this shit with microtransactions. You can hunt and skin animals to craft equipment upgrades, like being able to carry more loot, money, guns, ammo, or any other thing that uncultured kids think is the coolest shit to rap about. However, to max out any particular category, you need to do the path of the hunter missions, as the final upgrades need rare animal skins, which can only be obtained through these missions. Here's a fun example that requires you to kill rabbit dogs using a flamethrower. This game is evil. I found these missions to be okay, but they could have been good if they didn't force you to use the f bow most of the time. Other than that, you can also pick plants from the environment to craft performance enhancers, not the type your dad uses, to help you out in hunting or combat. And finally, my favorite is the skill system in this game. It is divided into three sections based on mobility, stealth, and combat. As you progress through the game, you unlock more skills, though some skills have a special requirement like completing deliveries or collecting five collectibles of the same kind. The delivery missions are alright, but I don't know why anyone would be interested in these stupid ass collectible- Oh! Well, I guess now I know why they would be interested. There's the usual increase health, decrease damage type skills. There's skills that look like they're minor, like reloading while running, but are actually kinda game changing. And then there's cool sh like water takedowns, chain and knife throw takedowns. It is just the right amount of depth for a game like this. Hell, there's even a visual representation in the game for it, as your tattoo grows depending on how many skills you have. Every single skill here feels actually useful, and the best part about it is one skill point equals one skill. Yes, no skill needs more than one one skill point. I, I love you. I love you like my bitch. The last thing I want to talk about before we get to the story and side missions is my favorite activity on the map and that is outposts. There are basically enemy camps which you can take on however you want and that freedom is what makes them my favorite. For example, you can go in guns blazing or you don't even have to reach the outpost. I cleared this entire outpost by sitting on a boat with a sniper rifle. Just like the towers, I completed all the outposts before making this review but unlike the towers, I actually enjoyed the outposts mainly because of the fact that now finally coming to the story and side quests, I'm just gonna go right ahead and say that there's not a single good side quest in this game. There's not a lot of them and the ones that are present are just not fun. They're just boring in my opinion and I don't know how else to put it. It's either just talk to someone, go kill a person or animal, come back and talk to the same person again, or talk to someone, go fetch something and come back and talk to the same person again to finish the mission. And that wouldn't be that big of a problem if the writing in these side missions were good, but it isn't. In fact, there was a moment that I wanted to abandon a quest just like Bryce Hall's dad abandoned him simply because of the sh writing and the abhorrent voice quality of these kinds of NPCs that I mentioned earlier. Now the main story here is just the exact opposite of this and it is without a doubt the best story that this series has to offer. You play as Jason Brody who ends up getting trapped and captured on an island after skydiving to it with his friends. Your brother who is an ex-marine tries to break you out but gets deleted in the process by the villain of the game. Vas gives Jason a chance to escape but in the process he ends up diving into a river and getting knocked the f out. When you wake up, you realize that you were saved by some of the native rebels of the island and from there on you set out on an adventure to save your friends but things don't go quite as planned. The rest is up to you to find out. The main missions of the game are awesome. There is only one trailing mission in the entire game which is really special for a Ubisoft game and that is the only mission I have a problem with. Other than that, they are really enjoyable as the game keeps things interesting with epic shootouts, challenging encounters, different location and bombastic set pieces. They don't do anything too different but they use the core mechanics of the game to create a damn fun experience. The story of Far Cry 3 is something that works as well as it does because the gameplay complements it really well. Things like you having tattoos on your arm for skills or starting out feeling underpowered are here for a reason. You are on an island that is out to eat you like an obese American on receiving his first hamburger of the day. It is a story of how a man is changed by all the chaos that surrounds him and it is shown really well through Jason Brody. Now while I don't like Jason Brody a lot as a character, I absolutely love his arc of transforming from a pussy ass bitch I just hit my mic while saying that to a fuck 
fucking killing machine. And you feel the change with him because of the feeling of progression in the gameplay I praised the fuck out of earlier. It's obvious that you need to fight to survive in a place like this, but sometimes it starts to feel like Jason is enjoying this violence and losing his humanity in the process. The friends you rescue along the way constantly question this. And you're carrying all these weapons and you have all these weird tattoos. I'm not saying you shouldn't go rescue them. I'm just worried it's affecting you. And the frustration, the rage for that transformation is provided by Voss. At first I felt like Voss was gonna be one of those overhyped, cringy, crazy for the sake of being crazy we live in a society type of villains, but I was proven wrong as fast as most critical. In just the second encounter with him, you really feel like this guy is genuinely, clinically insane. He's not just here to give speeches, although he does have one of the most iconic lines in gaming. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? but he is actually here to kill you. This becomes even more interesting as you begin to see the similarities between Voss and what this island is turning Jason into. No offense to anyone else on the cast, but my god Michael Mando absolutely kills in this role. It is one of the best performances I think I've ever seen in a game. Now I do have a slight problem with the story, but to talk about it, I have to give spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled, skip to this time code on your screen right now. That was it for the spoiler warning, and now let's not waste any time like a bunch of pussies. The one problem is not that Voss dies in like the 7th chapter, but that how the f*** does Hoyt not know what Jason looks like? You're telling me that even after all the cleansing I did on these islands, no one got a picture or like a description of my appearance to Hoyt and his men. That is just unbelievable levels of stupid. But in conclusion, I already answered the question, is Far Cry 3 worth it in 2021 or whenever you are watching this with just the title of this video. It is not my favorite Far Cry, but it's a damn good game. It is available for like 150 rupees or $2 during sales on the PlayStation Store and Steam. And this game is an absolute steal at that price. So subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed and let's try to get 50 likes on this video and also share this video around if you're not a bunch of pussies. I can't even begin to imagine how horrible it must be to have your whole family shot in front of you and then being wounded yourself. What the f Oh my god I misclicked and I'm glad I did it. <laughs> you're fine. You, bro 